Hello, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Weinberg. I'm the director of the Division of Dermatology at the Jamaica Hospital Medical Center and an associate clinical professor of dermatology at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York. In this video, we're going to quickly review the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis and how our understanding of some of the underlying disease processes has supported the development of new therapies. Often referred to as eczema, atopic dermatitis is a common, chronic, inflammatory condition that manifests in the skin as xerosis and pruritus. The disease develops out of complex interactions among skin barrier defects, dysregulated immune responses, and environmental factors. Research has focused on whether atopic dermatitis is caused by primarily outside-in or inside-out pathogenic processes. In the outside-in hypothesis, atopic dermatitis is a manifestation of intrinsic problems in the epidermal barrier formed by the stratum corneum. This model is supported by various genetic loci that increase the risk of atopic dermatitis development. For example, a significant subset of patients carry truncation mutations in the gene encoding filaggrin, a structural protein that is essential for the skin barrier function of the stratum corneum. Exacerbated by pruritus-induced scratching and the associated mechanical damage, inherent epidermal barrier dysfunction increases transepidermal water loss and dermal penetration by allergens and microbes, leading to innate and acquired immune responses, including the proliferation of the Th2 subset of helper T cells. Other research has compared clinically unaffected and lesional skin samples from patients with atopic dermatitis, as well as recently developed acute lesions with chronic lesions. These studies have shown that T-cell numbers are elevated even in non-lesional skin, revealing subclinical inflammation in these areas and suggesting that inside-out processes induced by aberrant immune responses may be an early trigger of atopic dermatitis development in certain at-risk individuals. In this model, the onset of acute atopic dermatitis is tied to significant skin infiltration by T cells and dendritic cells and the proliferation and activation of Th2 and Th22 cells, responses that intensify as the disease shifts to chronic. Both acute and chronic atopic dermatitis lesions show elevated expression levels of Th2 and Th22 cytokines, some of which are thought to be major drivers of disease-related inflammation and pathophysiologic manifestations. For example, the cytokine interleukin-31, or IL-31, regulates the formation of an intact physical skin barrier, whereas the Th2 cytokines, IL-4 and IL-13, are known to promote B-cell differentiation, enhance antibody isotype class switching to IgE, and reduce the expression of filaggrin and ceramides, waxy lipid molecules that are a major component of the stratum corneum. High levels of IL-4 and IL-13 can also increase eosinophil recruitment via such factors as IL-5 and eataxin-1, inhibit the production of cantalocytins, antimicrobial peptides produced by keratinocytes in the skin, and decrease keratinocyte differentiation, leading to significant epidermal hyperplasia. The activities of these and other signaling molecules exacerbate local inflammation, activate other immune cell types, and compromise the skin barrier, thereby worsening hydration and weakening antimicrobial defenses. Of note, IL-4 and IL-13 signal in part through a common type 2 receptor complex consisting of IL-4 receptor alpha and IL-13 receptor alpha-1. These type 2 receptor complexes are expressed on keratinocytes, hair follicles, epidermal sebaceous and sweat glands, and fibroblasts, where they are activated by IL-4 or IL-13 to drive downstream pathways in Th2-mediated immune responses. Interestingly, as in a number of other chronic inflammatory disorders, insights into the underlying dysregulated immune pathways have been used to support investigations of biologic therapies that target specific cytokines or immune cell populations in patients with moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. For example, recently reported studies explored the efficacy and safety of anti-IL-5 antibodies in atopic dermatitis, although overall outcomes were disappointing. On the other hand, as we'll discuss in more detail later in the program, promising clinical trial results have been reported for dupilumab, a fully human monoclonal antibody that binds to the IL-4 receptor alpha subunit, thereby blocking signaling by both IL-4 and IL-13. Other systemic modalities that are less far along in development include biologics that target IL-13 or IL-31 directly, as well as various non-biologic disease-modifying medications. 
One important lesson that has emerged from research into atopic dermatitis is that the disease can present clinically with a spectrum of phenotypes, including variability and severity, persistence, lesional characteristics, comorbidities, and treatment responses. This likely reflects, at least in part, heterogeneity in the relative contributions from inside-out and outside-in pathogenic mechanisms to atopic dermatitis development, persistence, and progression in various patient subsets. Detailing clinical molecular disease characteristics in different cohorts and potentially even linking these phenotypes to specific genotypes should help identify biomarkers that can eventually be used to personalize atopic dermatitis management. Indeed, although no biomarkers are presently recommended for routine clinical use, this is likely to change in the coming years, which should allow us to classify atopic dermatitis subtypes, assess disease severity, predict treatment responses, and or evaluate patient outcomes. Certainly, it is an exciting time for us and our patients with more difficult to treat atopic dermatitis. With that, I would like to thank you for your time today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the program.